Welcome to this video on World War I photography and postcards. If you're interested in this topic and you like what I have to say or what I'm reviewing, please subscribe. I'm also on Facebook at War Portraits, two words, where I'm a collector of this period, late 19th century, early 20th century, European, U.S. war related postcards and real photo. Uh, collecting. <clears throat> so the first postcard up is from a dealer in Pennsylvania. It is a Christmas card and I have a soft spot for old vintage Christmas items. This one, bidding started I think less than a dollar and had three bids on it. Blow it up here so you can see the image. Beautiful Christmas tree, beautiful building, um, and you can see um, people convalescing, um, recovering, so possibly a hospital scene. And um, just, a, just a beautiful tree. Uh, condition's not bad. The back of it is here. Might be a little bit of water damage on the very back. I'll take a look when it comes in. Um, some edge wear, but, but not bad for the time. I don't speak a lick of German. So if you know um, what this says or where it's from, um, please comment in the comments below. It's another reason why I'm doing these videos, because I might uh, plan on learning a lot from, from some of the comments too. So please feel free to comment. Um, on, on what that is. Okay. The next one is from 609. He's a German seller. I bought from him multiple times. Buy him from more than probably two years now. Very reputable. He has a great selection and a great variety of, of uh, cards. And let's bring this one up and I'll show you why I got it. Uh, he posts all, most all of his listings and collectibles, Militaria, World War I, original period items, Germany, and photography. So if you're selling real photo postcards or photographs of World War I and related uh, to this, the German side, that's where you should post it. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Sometimes you'll see these things posted all over the place. Okay, so I'm going to blow up the picture. <clears throat> and my interpretation of this is, is post-World War I. And I'm judging that based on the type of photo paper it's on. It's not um, like what we traditionally see as a real photo postcard, but possibly a photographic print on a compact, uh, just regular ca camera, which would be uh, like a brownie or something, whatever they would use in Germany. Um, but their Germans are notorious for wonderful cameras and uh, wonderful um, photography, film, um, during this period. So some of the best photographies coming from this period. I like these images here because they're not far away. A lot of times you'll see, you know, a, a group of soldiers and they're really far away or they're super up close. This one's a nice medium and it's a scene where they're actually moving, but there's enough shutter light there that, that you don't have a lot of, um, uh, movement in the photograph which would distort the image so it's actually pretty decent and I'm guessing it's interwar period or right after the war because of the uniforms and they're wearing the, the caps but a great picture maybe their uh, barracks or the training grounds in the background so uh, to me this interesting would also be a good one for a colorization project just because of the nature of the, the photograph nicely framed okay next one for the next ones, I did purchase some uh, Imperial Navy items. Here is the SM, SMS Brenham, which was a ship, but also the namesake for the class of the ship. It was a group of um, what they called light cruisers built right around the turn of the century. It was the second generation of modern cruisers in the German Navy, and they had significant improvements in that um, that their funnels, which are here, okay, they went from two to three. They made improvements in its armament and its protection, uh, in its system. In one of these, they used a different propulsion system, the Leipzig, and um, it had service from the, you know from the time they were produced up until um, some of these survived into World War II, but mainly as commerce raiders and as support ships for for the fleet. This one was sunk in 1915 by the British. A uh, nice photograph, postcard. Um, and like I said, this is probably a photo print, not a 
photo postcard, a real photo postcard. I'll have to take a look at it when it comes in to see if it's actually a print or a photograph. All right, price wise, two fifty. I think the bidding start at ninety nine. So these are great uh, gateway collectors items for people that are just getting started, or maybe like a kid who wants to to learn learn the period, learn the history, um, and, and learn collecting. And the nice thing I like about them is. Um, you know, you can collect them, put them in an acid-free box, and um, they don't take up a lot of room. Okay, the um, next one I purchased, which is the Light Cruiser. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, Nibble or Nibble, uh, but this is of the Gazelle class. So this is the first modern class of cruiser. So this pre is the pre-cruiser to the Brenham class of light destroyers. You can see it has two funnels, a little bit smaller of a ship, had some different armament configurations um, than the next generation of the Brenham class. And these also seen active, obviously active service uh, in World War I as well, but probably not as, as much um, since they're a little bit older. <clears throat> but a nice, nice, nice photograph. Next one. Postcard. The Hamburg. So the Hamburg was in the Brown Room class. Beautiful ship. This one actually survived the war, had engagements during the war, and then actually survived into World War II and served as a barracks, not barracks, um, berthing for U boat crews and was sunk by the British in 1944. So that's the nice thing about these these old photographs is you can see, touch, I like to jokingly say smell the history. So if you're an old book collector, you know what I'm talking about because they just have this sense of history, a little bit of a smell to them. It just, it, it, it's a, a nice smell. But you, you can see, you can touch, you can feel the history, and you can, especially with the 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 amount of research that's available online, you can take this postcard and look up the history of the ship, the class of ship it was, its technological advancements, how it fits into the whole history, how it actually was integrated in, into to the war theater and its impact um, um, during the war and after. And, you know, it's just interesting to see. Now, this is not a light cruiser. I, I, I have to look. I don't know what it is. If you want to put in the comments below what it is, I don't know if it is a um, battle cruiser, a armored cruiser, a pre-dreadnought, a dreadnought. I'm not sure. I didn't get a chance to look at it. But um, it's definitely not. Uh, I don't think it's a cruiser. But let, let me know in the comments below um, any links you want to put. That, and that's the Brandenburg. Um, I just haven't done the research on it. There's also another large ship there in the background. And just, I'm looking at it, it's, it's looking like a photographic print. But I'll have to take a look at it when, when it comes in. Okay, next. Okay. And this one, like the first photo, I bought it for its photographic qualities. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and open this up. And what I like about this photo is that it's, it's very nicely framed. You've got a nice background here, okay, which helps frame it. You've got the vegetation up front, which also frames it. You've got the main focal point here, okay, the regiment. But then every time you come back and you look at these photos, I see stuff that I did not see before. And maybe you see it right away, but I just missed it all together. It wasn't until like the sixth or seventh time I looked at this photo that I realized, um, I think maybe the second or third time I realized there was a fence in the background. Okay, oh, that's interesting. And some type of, and almost like some post there. But then realizing that there's like a regiment or a unit that's marching behind them and they're actually in motion. So I'm talking about that movement in a photograph what they have to hold really still during this period because it took a while for it to capture. That's what I'm talking about because they're actually in motion. You can kind of see them and the rifle's kind of going that way. One of the things, you know, to talk about is the movie that uh, they just produce. It's still in the theaters and you can get it on Amazon.
prime, uh, you can purchase it, but they will not grow old. Of uh, where they were able to reconstruct and colorize and digitalize and modernize these movie images from the First World War and what they were able to draw out and learn from it is just phenomenal. And one thing I want to point out is during these images at this time period, when you had your photo taken, to avoid this movement where you, you're, 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 you're kind of grayed out or fuzzed out because there's movement, you had to hold perfectly still. So when these movies started coming into play, these hand crank movies, and they were starting to get images of the men, um, you know, working in the trenches or along the roads or, you know, an artillery battery, they would see these cameras and they would just freeze up like a deer in the headlights because they, all they knew at that time is, I, I'm getting my picture taken. I need to freeze. So they literally would freeze. And you'd see this on the cameras. They would just hold still. They'd be like a deer in the headlight. They'd see the camera, and they would just freeze up because they knew they had to hold still. Well, the cameramen or, and the people that are helping back would say, oh, no, no, no. Keep moving. Keep moving. Get, you know, Because they're actually capturing this this movement, and it's all new to them because a lot of them have never experienced. But they maybe had experienced a movie, you know, um, a soundless movie, you know, at, at a movie theater. Um in their hometown or something like that. So they knew they were out there, but they had never actually been in a movie. So it must have been a, a big deal for them. But their first inclination when they saw this was, <gasps> freeze, I'm getting my picture taken. Deer in the headlight, you know. So it, it's just really interesting. And if you get a chance, uh, the what you'll, if you're a photograph or person that collects photographs, real photo postcards, or person that collects postcards of this period, you just you just need to see that movie and really appreciate it. It is just phenomenal. So make sure you go and see it. All right. <clears throat> so that's all from 609. I did purchase a uh, a postcard, like a painted version of the, the Hamburg. And I'd probably say this is my... Um, biggest win here out of this one. So after I purchased the one postcard of the SMS Hamburg, I did a search in eBay search, this SMS Hamburg, and this came up on the UK eBay site. Now, look how he had this listed. He had this under art and art photography. You would have never found this if you were in the World War I section. So in some ways it was mislabeled. Now let's take a look at the, the photograph. Some of these photos were, and I'll show you a few, you know, they can come in $30, $40, $50, $50. So, the, and he did not, this is not an auction, this is a buy it now. So, I saw it, buy, 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 purchase, purchase, you know, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Bought it right away, um, just because, like I guess, says, it, there's some uh, value on here. And two, you know, I've got the ships and, you know, so I'm really intrigued now to learn the history about this, this cruiser class. It's like cruiser class and, and these ships. But um, this is a 1913 postcard um, stamped in Kiel. And if I'm reading this right, this is September 13th. Uh, correct, correction, sorry. September 22nd of 1913. Uh, post, or, uh, stamped in Kiel. And um, as you can see, it's written. I can't make any of it out, especially cursive. But if anybody can, feel free to let me know. Um, or if they can make out the um, writing here, that would be great. But, you know, that's the, the thing I really enjoy about these is the history. Just think of the history that this group went through. The pre-World War I years, during the war, how uh, World War I naval history is just fascinating. Um, especially with um, the admiralties on both sides, the technology that's coming into play, the role of the U-boat, um, you know, how... The, the sea warfare is constantly changing and just think of after the war this group here witnessed the 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 defeat possibly was active participants in the sailor revolt or the spartacus uprising you know were they communists were they social democrats were they more on the conservative side you know were they part of the free corps did they join the merchant marines and travel the world you know, you know, what was their post World War One lives like? What was it like during the hyperinflation period? You know, that's just so fascinating. Um, and two, there is a interconnectedness with the past and photography. Um, there, there is a connection, and I don't know what it is. I say it's kind of 
voodoo-ish, um, but you, you do feel a, a connection to the past through photography that you don't get anywhere else. Um, it's, it's a window into the past. Um, and that, that's what I love about photo photographs, uh, historical period photographs. Okay. Especially this period because the photographs are so, so important. All right. The other items purchased. Let me dig a little deeper. Let's see if it'll let me go a little. Okay. Hope I think I got two. I think I got it right here. All right. Other purchase. Now this one was appropriately categorized for postcards, collectibles, postcards, and military. Uh, and this was an auction uh, for thirty-four dollars and two uh, dealer from Pennsylvania. You got four postcards: Turkish. You got all the capitals: Germany, uh, um, Austria. Um, London, Paris, Tokyo, um, and Russia. And you've got the Deutschland, Deutschland with the royal family. And then here, this is the main reason why I got it, because you got, these are shanty cards, and you got the German aviators. So, and this card is marked, it's numbered. And I did purchase, because I got a couple of these, so I did purchase the German aviator shanty card reference manual. It's a large manual. I just got to see if I can find this photograph. If you know <clears throat> who this was or any more history, um, feel free to put in the comments below so I have uh, reference to it. Um, I just haven't had a chance to look through the book to see see who he was. Um, but I, I do like the um, graphic design. Of course, they probably call called graphic design back then. But you know, it's just a little bit different than a traditional shanty card. Um, so um, I, I got that. And I think I got a pretty good value, even though it was a little bit higher than I thought. Three bids on that. Okay, so let's look at uh, what I didn't win. <clears throat> Things I didn't win. Airplane pilot, close-up image. There'd be a beautiful colorization. You also have a good uh, close-up of the engine. 22, 26. This one here, and I'll show you why. Um, it, uh, I think, has a nice perspective if you're particularly if you're a helmet collector it's interwar period look at the helmets it's the air the ear tear out style of helmet um, which uh, was World War one and up and through um, probably the 1930s I guess but if you're a helmet collector um, that's a prized helmet and then of course you got a picture to go along with it and again you can tell it is not uh, the World War one vintage uh, printing it's more of your uh, 1930s 1940s uh, print. But that one got away. These are the ones that got away. Um, Helena got away. The lip said got away. A uh, postcard here, um, just an interesting design, bid on it, 1550. Things that uh, watching that I didn't bid on, but uh, just for your reference to kind of see what they went for. You have uh, a telegraph pole, um, really good photo for. Um, Photo restoration, anything involving technology, these things do pretty well. This is just under forty dollars. This beautiful image, um, also of a machine gun patch, also so that brings the value up of that, and a mine thrower as well. And let me see. Um, anything with the animals also does really well. So you've got these standing attention with their dogs. Um, and these off to war portraits, uh, this is how I started a collection, but ones that are really good shape, show good uniform, photos in, in good good shape, uh, younger, um, they, they still command pretty decent um, amount of condition. And the you know photo of, of the soldier is, is key. Um, here is one, we'll open this one up, sold for 66. And this one, I really wish I would have gotten this one. Um, it was a neat um, town picture with a bridge going over it. That'd be beautiful for um, c 
colorization project. Just absolutely beautiful. But that one, that one got away. <clears throat> that was from earlier in the year. The sailor images, you know, like you know, they can command decent money, and it can be, it can vary. So here's another close up of his, of a airman in his aircraft thirty one six. And here, here, this one went for sixty six. The Luger's. So if there's firearms in it, depending on the firearms, there can command a premium. Nineteen fourteen. Um, very common for the period. I don't know if that's a rail car behind him. I'll take a look. Nope, just building, but shows your rifles. Not a bad image. Um. And about probably what you'd expect to pay, maybe a little bit more. Um, but again, this one, I don't think I bid on it, but just, just watched it. Okay. And that's the ones that got away. So I thank you for your time. Make sure you subscribe if you're interested in, in continuing this. And I wish you all a good and safe Hopefully a month I'll be back and uh, do some more recordings.